Here we go, it's last week at the auction, America's favorite top 10 list of auction results from around the globe, as hand selected by me, Josh Levine, your host and guide to the world of auctions, and this is episode 6 of season 3, and officially the hottest YouTube series and social media sensation in the entire world. Okay, the auction world. And now, with over 10,000 subscribers and 1 million views, we're expecting exponential growth as the word is out. You people love auctions and better yet, crazy auction results. But I know that you know that I know you're here for all the fancy learning. Knowing what's hot today in the secondary market can mean dollars in your pocket. In fact, watching last week at the auction every week can make you money, both buying and selling. And isn't that what we all want? World peace? So let's go. It's last week at the auction. We're starting things off today with the hottest band in the world, KISS! Number 10 is Marvel's 1977 KISS comic that brought $280 at Matthew Bullock's. I think every one of my friends had this. Of course, I cut mine all up to make my KISS closet. Didn't everybody have a KISS closet? Or was in the KISS army? Anyway, KISS has always known the power of marketing, and this comic was just the start of what has become an incredible franchise of stuff. If you can stick KISS on it, they sell it. Did you even know there's a KISS casket? Seriously. Okay, I've been telling you that 1980s toys are hot, and here's a blast from the past. Number 9 is the 1986 Amtoy My Pet Monster that just sold for $375 at Quinn's auction. He had horns, blue fur, a fang smile, and a breakaway pair of orange plastic handcuffs. A hit toy for the American Greeting Company, he even went on to have his own cartoon. He's starting to show he's got some nostalgia collectability as well, that's for sure. And, here, and he's so much cooler than that My Buddy doll. All right, our next lot is from the garden architectural genre. Number eight is three cast metal geese that just brought $1,800 at A. Bell's. I always search the yard at estate sales for these kind of goodies. Many people don't realize that things in their yard have value and can be taken for granted or just seem as worthless old lawn ornaments and they leave them when they sell their house. Don't leave $1,800 in your yard. Number seven is Angela Trotta Thomas and this oil painting that did $4,000 at rail and road auctions. What makes this painting special and the others in this sale was their previous owner, Richard Kuhn. A man who loved his toy train so much that he bought Lionel in 1986 and many credit him with resurrecting the company. This sale had amazing original works of art all dedicated to the love of these trains. Okay, what time is it? It's time for number six, and it's the Universal Tri-Compax Chronograph Wrist Watch that just brought $5,500 at Butterscotch Auction. Not a household name like Rolex or Omega or Breitling, this watch is all about collectability and a killer movement. Would you have known this was a $5,000 watch if you saw it? There's always something to learn, and make sure you research those little finds in Dad's old dresser drawers, especially when handling an estate. There are many a watch out there that will surprise you. It's not just those household names. So what's next? Number five is a classic mid-century walnut and brass credenza that brought $6,250 at Leland Little. It was unattributed, but had the look that all the designers and the millennials want, that mid-mod look. You know, it's gonna be here for a while, so keep your eyes peeled. This is something I bet you can pick up in an estate sale or a yard sale for three or $400 and turn a great profit. All right, I love this one. Number four is a 1950s K&O Fleetline outboard motor, the toy motor store display that did 12,500 bucks at Milestone. Featuring some great toy battery out motors and in excellent condition, the toy buyers were fighting over this one. How cool of a find was this? Okay, now for my big bird fans. Number three is a large 19th century eagle weather vane that soared to $14,000 at William Smith Auctions. It had a 63-inch wingspan and was a rare variant. Period weather vanes command top dollar at auction and they fall into my don't overlook stuff in the yard or outside or hey, even on the roof. Architectural elements are in demand. You got it? All right. Number two is a rare Brunoil one gallon can 
that brought $25,000 at Route 32 in Showtime auctions. Great graphics and quite hard to find, especially in this condition. This was part of an amazing sale that featured many wonderful advertising finds. I hear these two companies just recently merged. I'm going to look more into that. I can't wait to see what they got coming up next. So here we are, and I think this one's timely. Number one is a Princess Diana warm dress that did $26,000 at Mid-Hudson Auctions. The hit Netflix series, The Crown, has cast Diana back into the spotlight, and what a great time to auction a known piece that belonged to the princess. She has been seen and photographed in this dress at least twice, and the lot was accompanied with its provenance. When selling a collectible or a nostalgia, it's always great to strike while the iron is hot. And the royal family is back in the spotlight again, so it might be time to sell what you have if you're holding. And that's what happened last week at the auction. So now it's time to answer this week's question that comes from one of my wonderful viewers that said, Hey Josh, where is the best place to find things to resell? Well, that's a great question and I wish there was one simple answer or if I had tons of time, but if you ask me my favorite, it's got to be yard sales. You never know what you're going to stumble across, but honestly, I like to be as diverse as possible. So, because yard sales can let you down a couple weeks in a row and then you get depressed. So, I try to schedule a day of yard sailing, typically Fridays. The first day is always the best day. Two days of auctions, one day of hitting all my favorite thrift stores and junk shops, and the other three days, listing, packing, and shipping. Yeah. That's a seven day work week, but when you love what you do, it's not work. Maybe that'll be a video. Well, again, thank you everybody, and don't forget to email me any of your questions, josh at Josh Levine Speaks, and feel free to ask me anything. Before I go, if you enjoyed the show, subscribe below, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment or two, they're analytical gold. So, check out all the great auction houses from today's show. I'm gonna have them all listed down. I always have them in my blog. Support your local auctioneers, it's important. And special thanks to the Lucky Odds out of San Antonio, Texas for providing me their hit song, Whiplash. Check them out at theluckyodds.com. Support your artists and local musicians. I'll see you next week, or last week at the auction.